Uh, this is going to be the release video for the ship loader. So uh, I'll try to go over this quickly. The ship loader is a long reach container handler that's able to reach over the edge of a dock, lower down a container onto a ship. So uh, that's kind of the purpose of this craft. So we'll walk around. Um, it's diesel. Have your diesel fill right there. Uh, we go in the back. It's branded with my Pat brand. It's uh, it's Precision um, Advanced Technologies. We have a cable anchor and a pintle that will be set up for the T test system, but that's yet to be set up. We'll go over the lights when we start up. Uh, we have rear wheel steering. Uh, we have our container carriage. All right, so let's go go ahead and get started and go here. So we have a simulated grate to protect the radiator. Uh, right above, you'll see on the door here, we have a little arrow. Right above that is the um, toggles. As we get close, you notice the light automatically comes on. We can configure that light to be either white, which is default, red. We can also brighten them, and we can dim it, and then one more press will shut the light off. Uh, let's shut that door. So when we get in our seat, we, uh, it turns on all the backlights and cameras. We have a camera go looking straight ahead so that when we have a container and we can't see very well in front of us, that will allow us to uh, maneuver. We also have one looking down on the right side here so we can see the edge of a dock or the ship that we're putting it over. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to click our engine start stop. Uh, when this is in the start function, this will automatically uh, restart. If we start to stall, let me just turn sounds up. All right, so we're up and running. Uh, below that is our selected gear. We're currently in neutral. Uh, we have two ways of uh, gear selection. Uh, it's a manual transmission. Um, you know, I'll talk about why I chose manual. Uh, we can go the gear up button. We have six forward gears, and we have uh, one reverse gear. All right, and we can also use the three key to go up, and we can use the four key to go down. All right, so that's our two ways of shifting our gears. We have speed miles per hour, tachometer, engine temperature, and battery. We uh, have our parking brake release. So parking brakes default on. Uh, if you click the parking brake um, up there, it will release the brakes. Uh, we also have another feature for the parking brake that if I leave my seat, it will automatically set the parking brake. That way, if we need to jump out to uh, turn on a container, we don't have to worry about setting the parking brake. It will automatically set. And when we sit back on the seat, it's back to, um, you know, it's uh, off position. All right, so let's go over the lights really quick. So uh, if we start to turn left, you'll notice the left lights turn on in a wigwag pattern for directionals. Same with the right. All right. Uh, if we tap the brakes, we get flashing brake lights. If we go into reverse, you see, I'm going up. I meant to go down. As you can see, we get reverse lights along with that buzzer. All right, if we turn on the headlights, which is over here, you'll notice that we get uh, running lights all around. And if we turn on the hazards, we get the flashing wigwags all around. All right, so we'll go ahead and shut the headlights back off. We have release container, spotlights. We have spotlights front and back, as you can see. Uh, we have some uh, extra controls here. We have boom out and in, boom up and down, expand carriage, retract carriage, winches up, winches down. Some of these, the boom out in, that can be controlled with the one, two keys, as you can see on the left. Um, the boom up and down can be controlled with the up down arrow. We can also rotate the carriage with the left right. So we'll go over that. You can look at the driver's seat, it says steering's AD, throttle, brake is WS. Left right is rotate carriage, up down is boom up. Um, should be boom up and down. One is boom out, two is boom in, three is gear up, four is gear down. So let's go ahead and get going. So we can start in pretty much any gear we want. Uh, the main benefit of having a manual transmission is that it gives us um, good speed control. So right here, um, the reason you want a manual transmission is if I floor it in fourth gear here, you'll notice it caps us out about 15. All right, so you'll notice I'll, I'll use this uh, manual gearbox when we get close to the edge of a dock because I don't want um, I don't want it to go so fast that it runs off the dock. So let me actually just turn the master down a little bit. Okay. All right, so we'll start by expanding our carriage. So that's it. Uh, we're going to hold that. As you can see, this will come out. And so I can hold it while I drive. 
Alright, so I just want to get that all the way out. Right about there is good. It will lock into position, as you can see. So it's locked into position. Alright, now I already selected this uh, yellow container, the locked one. I already turned the top connectors on. Alright, so I can press the up arrow key on my keyboard, and that's going to raise my carriage. Alright, so now you see how quickly we turn there? Um, that's how you get into trouble when you're trying to do alignment or when you're trying to get close to dock. So that's why it's a manual transmission. So let's go down to first gear. Alright, so if I go, if I floor it in first gear and I go max RPS, you'll notice that it caps us about 3 miles an hour. You see how nice and slow and controllable we are? It's actually going to take us less time to go at a slow speed and get lined up the first time than if we have to try to realign. All right, so let's look at this left um, camera here. It's showing us where the edge of our um, container carriages and the, um, <coughs> I, I want to go out a little bit more, and it shows us where the uh, edge of the container is. All right, so now let's start lowering it down. These are already selected on, and as you can see, they will connect. Let me expand the carriage just to here. All right, so I just expanded the carriage a little bit more. All right, so we are connected, all right? So now let's uh, go ahead and press the up arrow. And I'm also going to press the one key, and that's going to push it out. All right, so now we, as you can see, we have it a little bit in front of us. That way, when it swings, it doesn't hit us in the nose. All right, so now, uh, if you look at the camera, you see we can still see ahead. If you look, we have that blue spam container in there. We can see that spam container in front of us, even though we're blocked by a container. So that camera is good for that. So let's go ahead and go into reverse. All right, and let's go ahead and we'll go in forwards. And so let's we can pick a kind of a faster gear here with the um, pick a little bit of a faster gear here going forwards. And you can see again using this camera, we can use that camera to kind of inform where we're going. All right, so uh, this is called the ship loader, and the purpose of this is, as you can imagine, to move containers and load ships. So I also have one that's the um, shifter, container shifter, and so that one is just to move containers. So that would be for a ship that has a crane that can load itself. So this one would be as good for loading containers. You can also just use this for dock handling um, if you wanted a separate crane. All right, so this camera here, as you notice, it looks down straight over the front of the container. This is good. Say we didn't want to go over the edge. We just want to go right up to the edge. This allows for precision uh, placement. So right there, as you can see, we're coming up on the edge. So let's go down to first gear. Okay. So as we, you know, as I was talking, this is why you want a manual transmission. Is remember, if we're in first gear, we're we're capped at three. So I can floor it, and I'm only ever going to go three miles an hour. So that allows me to get nice and close to the edge of the dock. See how close I got without running over. If I had an automatic transmission, that would shoot me over the end, and you'd have to start all over again. So let's put the parking brake on. Let's go ahead and go down to neutral. All right. So let me show you the, uh, the lift capabilities of this. All right, so we're going to go all the way up. We won't go all the way up. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the, in the orientation that would cause the greatest chance for us to tip over forwards, and you'll see that it's nice and stable. All right, so this is our maximum reach right here, okay? So as you can see, that's going to be our maximum reach. We have zero problem uh, holding a container out there. If we had two, we would tip over and fall into the water. So with this vehicle, because of the length of the boom, uh, we want to handle one container at a time, especially if we're out far like this. And so I've operated some real-life um, long-reach forklifts, and... The uh, there's a gate, there's a uh, chart in there, and there's a gauge for a weight. So the more weight you put out, the closer you have to keep it, it towards you, so you don't tip over. All right. Now these uh, also move nice and slow, so that um, so that you don't get a herky jerky motion, which will cause. That's when you'll start to have to worry about tipping over, is when uh, you're herking and jerking. So let's let's bring this back with the two key. And let me show you uh, the proper procedure for lowering this down on the winch. All right, so one thing to note is when we're up at a high angle like this, as you notice when I rotate, you will hit the 
you will hit the arm. All right. So when you're rotating, you want to keep a flatter uh, boom height. So I'll show you that in a moment. But uh, so let's let me show you the proper way to lower this down on the winch. So what you want to do is before you detach this from the winch, you want to get this nice and close to you. So before we put that boom up, so we were traveling like this. So you want to start right here. And this is when you want to uh, disconnect your uh, carriage for winching down. All right, and the reason you want to do it nice and close like this is that container is going to drop down uh, probably about a meter. And force equals mass times acceleration. So the, um, the longer it's out there, when this drops, it's going to put a, a lot of force on that boom. If, if it's nice and close like this, you don't have to worry about tipping over. If it's all the way out, that's when you have to worry about tipping over. So I'll show you that in a second. All right, so let's drop it with the winches. So we just need to press down. I'm just going to press it once, and you'll notice. See how it bounces? It dropped a little bit. See how we have no problem tipping over? If that was at full extension like I just did, that's when we'd have to worry about a tip over. So let's go ahead and put this out. All right, we'll put this out, and we'll simulate that we're loading on a boat. So let's go down, and let's lower to about there. Now watch what we can do. We can rotate this. As long as we're about this angle, we will not hit the boom. So we could rotate the container, and let's say we had a ship-oriented or a barge uh, where we load containers sideways. This allows us to also load our containers sideways if we want it to. So all these motions are designed to be nice and slow because the more acceleration we get in there, the more force we're getting because the mass is, is constant. All right, so now let's continue. We'll lower it down on the cables. All right, again, the uh, winches are nice and slow. Again, this is on purpose so that we're not putting a ton of force into the um, into the machine and causing it to tip over. All right, so now we could load a ship like so. All right, so now let me show you uh, kind of the emergency procedure for if you got this shaking. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reattach it. I'm going to show you, worst case scenario, what happens if you don't follow that procedure with... Um, with detaching when the container is nice and close. All right, so now because we have stretch in the cables and store marks, um, I'm going to have to back up to get this to attach. So I'm going to go into reverse, and I'm going to use the dock to get that. Um, I'm going to use the dock to get that locked. Okay, so now that is um, locked, as you can see. All right, so now let's uh, let me show you the uh, now let me show you uh, kind of the worst case scenario and the procedure of what you would do if your uh, container gets too uh, you know if you drop your container too vigorously. As you notice, another reason to be going uh, you know have this nice manual transmission is when I'm in first here. Like I said, I can only go three miles an hour. See how it swings. If we were going super fast and we slammed in the brakes and that container swinging and this arm is all the way out, that's another situation where you're going to get into that it's going to try to tip you over into the water. Let me put the parking brake on. All right, so I'm using the up arrow key. Again, we rotated with the left-right arrow key. I'm going to put the arm out, and so I'm going to keep it about at this angle. This is 45 degrees. This is going to allow us to get this as far away from us as possible. And as you can see, we have no problem. Now watch what happens when I drop the winches. Okay, see how it's starting to jerk us now? That could potentially, see, we actually did all right. We saved ourselves here. But um, that is when we potentially could run into problems with a tip over. So we actually didn't tip over. We did all right here. But if you do tip over or start to tip over, the procedure is very simple. Release the container. If you release the container, that's going to lose your mass. And the vehicle is heavy enough, it's going to drop right back down. So if you do get an emergency situation, it's better to... Um, it's better to drop the container and then retrieve the container than it is to have to retrieve the entire machine, especially in a career save. So let's go ahead and put this down, and I'll show you the last feature, which is the release. Oh, there we go. See how I got it swinging? If we get the swing in a, uh, at max distance, that's when we're going to get into problems with uh, tip over. And if you do get into a problem where it's trying to tip over, all you have to do is release the container, the mass is gone, and now you don't have to worry anymore about um, tipping over. All right, so let's raise that on up. 
All right, so this is the ship loader. So it's a nice versatile long reach container handler that has the ability to reach over the edge of a dock and load a ship or a barge. It also, you can do uh, stacking of containers with it. All right, thank you for watching.